Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. It's great to have you here today. And it's so good to be back recording regular podcast episodes. Uh, We've got a lot of great topics planned for you for 2022. So thank you for being here and stay tuned uh, to see what's coming up. But today's episode is about our experience with COVID, my family's experience with COVID. Now, some of you may have already sort of seen um, the information that I was sharing in real time as we were kind of going through COVID and processing, you know, the fact that we had tested positive. I was sharing over on Instagram and Facebook, uh, specifically in stories. And I've shared the story, sorry, I've saved the stories that, um, that I shared because there was a lot of interest and a lot of great questions that were coming through. So if you go over to uh, Natural Super Kids Instagram, you'll see in the story highlights, which are the little circles just below the bio, there's one on COVID and there's one on COVID kids. So you can have a look at those stories if you miss them, um, which will give you more information. Um, and you know, I answered a whole heap of questions that came through as well. Uh, I'll make sure that I pop links to those story highlights in the show notes as well. So they're really easy for you to find. So yeah, early in January, um, we tested positive to COVID. Now it was a bit of a shock because here in South Australia, we've been really well protected. You know, we really haven't been, directly personally affected by COVID much at all. We live about an hour south of Adelaide. So, you know, we are on the coast. There have been, you know, very few cases in South Australia until we opened the borders um, just before Christmas. So we went from, you know, having really not much COVID around at all to all of a sudden testing positive. So it was a real shock for us and we were the first in our circles to get it as well. We don't know where it came from. Um, My 14-year-old son was presenting with symptoms first, but his symptoms were super mild. So one day he woke up and um, I'd promised to take him mountain biking out to Fox Creek Mountain Bike Park. Those of you in South Australia might know of it. Um, And I had agreed to shuttle him and my husband. So they ride down the hills and, you know, we wait at the bottom with the car and drive them back up to the top because it's, you know, it's it's a big effort to kind of get back up to the top. So I'd agreed to do that for the day (laughs) for the first time ever. He'd been asking me for for a while. Um, And so I'd agreed to do that, but he was quite tired this particular day. Just, you know, it was just slow to get moving, but he is 14 and that is becoming more and more the norm. Like he's very slow in the mornings. Uh, So I didn't think too much of it. And also there'd been late nights, you know, holiday. Um, It was that just after that sort of new year period. So I just put it down to that. Anyway, we went mountain biking and he had a big accident or a big stack. Um, He, oh, it was just awful. He um, was going quite fast down a hill and, you know, did it, did a jump and, um, didn't land it quite right and tumbled down the hill into a blackberry bush. So he had to get back on his bike and get to the bottom and he got to the bottom and he was all scraped up. His top was ripped. He, (laughs) I sent a picture to a friend when we got home and she said, oh my gosh, it looks like he's been attacked by a bear. He had these really deep kind of scratches on his back. Um, And so this is related to our COVID experience because this was the day that his symptoms (laughs) were at their worst. That night, he got a bit of a sore throat and he was laying on my lap. He was very quiet. He was very sore. Um, 
and so he'd just kind of gone a bit in internal um and he, and I felt his forehead and he felt warm and um like he had a bit of a fever so I took his temperature I think he was 30 um 38.1 so a little bit high but it came down fairly quickly and then the next day he was okay but that's when I started getting a few symptoms. So that next day, I felt a little bit tight in the chest and a little bit congested. Um, so I just rested that day and we we stayed home. And then the next day I woke up and I was achy and I thought, okay, we have to go for a test. So me and my 14-year-old went and had a test, much to his disagreement. He was fine by then. His, his symptoms literally lasted 24 hours and maybe lingered on a little bit the next day. So he was fighting me saying, I don't need to go, to, go and get a test. I'm fine. Anyway, I, I said, yes, we have to. It's the responsible thing to do. We went and got a test and we tested positive. He, we got our test results back really quickly. Here in South Australia, the turnaround time was only 24 hours. When I was sharing that on socials, there was people in New South Wales and Victoria telling me they had had their test a week ago and still hadn't gotten their results. So we were very, very lucky. Um, and we only waited in line, I think it was two, three hours, which wasn't too bad at that particular time because the rat tests were – impossible to find. Um, and so, yeah, we just got there early, had the test. And when we got the results come through the next day, I literally just stared at my phone in disbelief that um, my 14-year-old's test results came through first and he was positive. And when I went and sh showed him, he could not believe it either. As I said, he was really <laughs> fighting the fact that he didn't need to go for a test. Um, so we were positive which was a big shock. As I said, you know, we were, I think mentally and emotionally, it was hard to kind of come to terms. It was the shock of being the first in our circles to get it, not knowing where it came from um, and all of those things. I also felt really guilty. So one of the first things I got onto is getting in touch with our close contacts. My daughter um, had been for a sleepover with three other girls. She hadn't tested positive yet by this stage, but I let them know that we'd tested positive. Um, and of course that day, my daughter and husband went for a test and she then got a positive test. My husband tested negative until a few days later, he started getting symptoms and then he finally tested positive as well. So we all eventually tested positive. Um, but yeah, I felt this I, and I knew that it was silly, but I felt this guilt for our close contact. So, um, you know, the, the girls that had been at that sleepover all had to isolate and their families for seven days. Um, and my sister with her two young children, one only two years old, had been over for a visit and had spent, you know, three or four hours here, uh, the day, a, a, a few days before we tested positive. So, I felt super guilty that they had to go and go through the hassle of getting tested and isolating and all of that sort of thing. They all tested negative. None of our close contacts tested positive at all, which is super interesting that my son, we think, picked it up from somewhere random. We don't know where. Um, but then we didn't pass it on to anyone, even though my daughter had you know, slept in the same bed as one of her friends. Uh, and potentially she wasn't contagious at that time. I don't really know. Um, but there was that feeling of guilt for our close contacts. And then, you know, just emotionally having to come to terms with the fact that we were going to be stuck at home for our holidays. I had worked really hard to get all the pieces in place and get ahead with my work so that I could have a proper four weeks off. And, you know, we ended up with COVID. On the positive side, I got a lot of rest, which is probably what I needed more than anything. And my, my poor husband had to isolate for longer because he tested positive last. Um, so yeah, as I'm recording this podcast episode, he's only just coming out of isolation. I think he had to do 16 days or something like that. Um, so in terms of our symptoms, so I really wanted to share this because when I was sharing on Instagram, 
the fear that was coming through, I just, I, I really just didn't, I couldn't believe how much um, fear there was around getting COVID and what it was like and what it was going to be like for the children and all of that sort of thing. So I will share that within my family, I was the only one that was vaccinated. Um, My kids haven't been vaccinated and my husband hasn't either. And so it was interesting that the kids' symptoms were super mild. Um, as I said, my son literally had had symptoms for 24 to 48 hours and then he was all fine, which was hard being in isolation with him, an active 14-year-old, when he was feeling well. He did go a bit stir-crazy. Um, and my daughter, again, once my daughter tested positive, she did get a bit of a fever. I slept with her for one night because she felt quite warm and I just wanted to kind of keep a, keep an eye on that. Um, but her symptoms were really very mild as well. She got a bit achy and a bit of a backache, which I got as well. So my symptoms were mild. My, I do still feel, feel like I'm a bit croaky, um, but my respiratory symptoms were, were, you know, not very, um, severe at all. I got, I, and I still have this little bit of a, a lingering cough, but I literally just cough a few times a day and that's it. And that's been, I didn't have like a, a really awful cough the whole way through, um, but I would just do this odd cough and my husband was the same. So the cough was mild. Um, both my husband and I did get night sweats for a couple of nights. You know, obviously that was part of the fever. I did have a little bit of kind of congestion, a blocked nose for a day or two. Um, I was quite achy in my back for just a day. Um, and the, I think the most prominent symptom for both my husband and I is the is the lethargy, feeling lethargic, tired, a bit lightheaded. Um, I have felt anyway, and just a bit of that brain fog. Um, but yeah, it felt like that the symptoms came in waves. Like I would feel fine, even when I was at the worst of my symptoms for, you know, the two or three days, I'd feel fine. And then I'd get a wave of like, oh, I really need to lay down and have another rest. You know, I would kind of try and just hang some washing out or something, something very, um, you know, uh, easy to do in in general terms, but it would, you know, I would tire really easily and my husband was the same. So we slept, we rested, um, and still I don't I still don't feel like my energy is where it usually would be. And we're probably sort of 12 days post that positive uh no more than that actually. As I'm recording this, it's about 14 days. Um post that positive test result. So I'm still not feeling, I'm still feeling a bit croaky in the voice um, and just a little bit more tired and a bit, a little bit kind of lightheaded and brain fog. Um, but overall, you know, it's been really easy to manage. Uh, one of the questions that I was, was getting a lot is what are we doing to manage symptoms, to help ourselves um, recover? Um, and to minimize symptoms through this whole COVID experience. The biggest thing was resting. Um, so all of us rested a lot. We spent quite a few days laying around, watching Netflix, reading books, sleeping. Um, my daughter slept for, actually both my kids had one night each where they you know, went to bed at say nine and didn't wake up until after 10 a.m., which is crazy late for for my kids, although they are sleeping in a bit more as they become, you know, they head into those teenage years. Um, so 8.39 was becoming fairly standard for the school holidays with the late nights. Um, but yet yeah, past 10 a.m., they both, they both did have this sort of really big sleep. Um, so lots of rest, making sure we're staying hydrated. This is these these two are the most important things: rest and hydration. So we were, you know, I was on to the kids about drinking water. Um, we were eating, you know, juicy fruits and vegetables to keep our hydration up. Um, we all had a little bit of a lack of appetite for a couple of days, so we stuck to those kind of juicy fresh foods. Um, 
We were drinking coconut water as well. So keeping hydrated was really important and was a big focus. And we were eating, you know, just good quality whole foods. As I said, our appetites were down, all of us for a few days. Um, And that kind of, you know, varied on the days that it was because we all kind of, um, you know, were at different stages of the infection. But we just made sure we had lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, good quality protein like chicken and kangaroo and fish, um, and really made sure that our sugar intake was low. So we just cut the sugar out, um, cut the processed food out and just stuck to those nutrient rich foods. Um, So it was nothing sort of special, but we did focus on a lot of the foods that we list out in our immune boosting cheat sheet as well. So we were getting in some fermented foods. We were making sure the fruits and vegetables that we were eating were were colorful and rich rich in those antioxidants, um, which are really important for the immune system. Uh, yeah, those sorts of things. So we do have an immune boosting cheat sheet that is free for everyone to download. And I'll make sure I pop the link to that in the show notes. Um, So that will be really handy to have on hand for both keeping your immune system healthy with, you know, the threat of the lurking virus, but also when you are sick, really good to get as many of those immune boosting foods in as possible and making sure that your, your, kitchen is well stocked of these foods. So COVID hit us at a very inconvenient time in that our our kitchen was fairly bare. Like we'd been through Christmas and New Year. We didn't have a lot of stuff in the freezer. I usually have a few meals ready in the freezer. Um, you know, I usually have some uh, quite a bit of uh, like protein and meat in the in the freezer, but our freezer was literally quite bare. So that was a bit of a pain. Um because there was, you know, delay in online shopping and that sort of thing. Luckily, we had a lot of local support and people that did deliver food to us. So that was really, really helpful. But one tip I would give you, um, because, you know, for a lot of it, it is very likely that the majority of us are going to have a COVID experience to just make sure you've got some some stocked food in the freezer, um, ready to go. Because when you're feeling under the weather, you know, everyone's appetite's a bit down. You don't really feel like cooking. So if you've got some nutritious meals ready to go, um, or just some things that you can quickly whip up, that is definitely really helpful. Of course, we took supplements as well. And I shared the details of these in those Instagram highlight reels, like the exact supplements that we were taking. We um, have all been taking zinc, vitamin C and vitamin D, you know, through this this sort of pandemic to keep our immune systems nice and strong and healthy. Um, so we continue to take zinc, vitamin C and vitamin D and, and really upped the doses of those nutrients as well. Uh, so we took a, a powdered supplement, which has zinc, vitamin C and vitamin D in it. Then we took some extra vitamin D, some extra vitamin C, and we did take some herbs as well. Uh, so we were taking or the adults and my eldest, who's 14, were taking andrographis, which is a great herb for um, immunity and also for reducing symptoms of things like um, fever and cough and phlegm. So we were taking uh, andrographis and then my daughter was taking a combination of olive leaf, eyebright, licorice and astragalus um, in, a com- in a combined powder. So we were we were taking those. I will say my daughter my daughter did vomit once through this COVID experience. So she was the only one that had this kind of vomiting symptom. She often does that just just once off when she has a fever. So I think it was just that. And then unfortunately she just had her supplements before she vomited. So then she it was a real struggle to get supplements into her after that. I did manage to to get some of the to continue with the zinc and the vitamin C and the vitamin D, but the herbs she was not keen on taking again. So I just kind of left that because her her symptoms were fairly mild anyway. My husband and I were also taking a cough, a herbal cough mixture, a liquid. Um 
And again, I share the details of this in the Instagram highlights. Um, it's called Mediherb Bronch Effect, and it is fantastic for soothing the bronchial and respiratory system. So that one's got licorice, thyme, marshmallow, echinacea, white whorehound, and ginger in it. Love that um, combination of herbs for the respiratory system. So that they're the they're the things that we were we were taking, um, and. If you're a Natural Super Kids Club member, we've put all, we've collated all of this information into a really handy booklet for you um, as a bonus resource. So it's the immune boosting ebook. You'll find it in the membership site, um, and we've we've let you know in the Facebook group as well. If you're not a club member and you're interested, you know, particularly during these uncertain times to have that support um, and that inspiration to boost your family's health, you can pop your name on the wait list. Again, I'll pop this link into the show notes um, and you will uh, get some information on how you can join as a Natural Super Kids Club member. Now, we didn't we didn't go and see a doctor. This was another question that came through. You know, do you have to go and see your doctor? What do you do when you when you test positive? No, unless you've got, you know, symptoms that you are concerned about, you can easily manage, most people can easily manage um, a COVID infection at home. So we didn't see the doctor. And the only pharmaceutical medication we took was a little bit of ibuprofen. I, I literally took one dose because I had this really achy back just for one day. And it's a very common symptom of, of COVID. Um, and my daughter had the same for one day. So she took a dose of ibuprofen and that kind of you know, the, the pain didn't come back after that dose for both of us. My husband took a few doses of ibuprofen for the aches and pains as well. But that I do want to talk a little bit about fever because a lot of people use fever medication like ibuprofen or paracetamol, you know, as soon as their kids are feeling a bit warm to bring that fever down. And I've talked about this a lot Um I don't know if I've, put, I've talked about it on the podcast, but in socials, and we've certainly talked about it in the Natural Super Kids Club, is you don't want to be too quick to bring a fever down. And this goes for illness in general and infections in general, because a fever is actually helpful for our bodies to fight an infection. It stimulates immune function. So our body warms up, you know, that has a role that, that, that happens for a reason. It stimulates our immune function and it slows down the infectious microbes. So our immune system kind of speeds up and the infectious microbes slow down. So it makes it easier in a very simplified way of looking at it, for our immune system to attack that virus or whatever whatever infection we're sort of talking about. The other thing fever does for kids is it slows our kids down. I'm sure you've had that experience where, you know, your kids are quite slow and lethargic and resting because they're sick. You give them some fever medication and all of a sudden they're running around. So our kid, you know, if our kids are resting, that's going to be better to conserve that energy for all of that immune system work that needs to be done. Um, so it allows our kids to rest as well. So we don't want to be too quick to treat a fever. And as I said, I slept with my daughter for one night. Um, we just had it. We all were sleeping sort of separately because we all got um, positive sort of uh, results at, at different times. So my husband wasn't positive yet. So I was sleeping on a mattress in the living area. So she just slept out there with me and I just wanted to kind of keep an eye on her in the night and make sure she didn't get too hot. But as a general rule, if you're, if you're child, like you want to start being concerned about a fever and taking steps to bring that fever down. If your child is listless, unresponsive, difficult to wake, confused, disorientated, but if they're alert, you know, they, they might be sort of fatigued and resting, but as long as they're responsive and, you know, alert when you talk to them, they wake up easily, um, then it's probably okay to leave a fever. The most, one of the most important things with a fever is to keep them hydrated. Um, so as long as you're keeping up that hydration 
uh, you know, a fever is actually good for fighting off an infection. And um, I've got a blog that goes into this in a bit more detail. Uh, So I'll make sure I link to that in the show notes as well. And just a little rule of thumb with that hydration, as long as your child is urinating at least every six to eight hours, that's a sign that their hydration levels are okay. Lots of kids kind of don't like drinking water when they have a fever or they're sick. So ice cubes, ice blocks um, can really help to, you know, keep that those hydration levels up. I know my daughter, you know, it, it prefers to be sucking on an ice block when she's unwell than sipping water. So really important just to keep hydrated. You know, those basics of hydration and rest and just making sure that that the immune defenses are as strong as possible with things like zinc and vitamin C and vitamin D and some of those herbs that I mentioned as well. So that is, you know, our experience. Of course, everyone's experience is very different. And I have shared some information on kids and COVID on Um, an Instagram highlight as well. So, you know, have a look there. But the reassuring thing is that the vast majority of children, you know, do get very mild symptoms with coronavirus. Um, And so that should be reassuring for parents. There are some kids that are in that higher risk category of of developing more um, serious sort of symptoms and illness with coronavirus. And I've shared some information about who those particular children are in that COVID kids highlight stories, stories highlight. Um, Yeah, including, you know, there was lots of questions coming through about uh, parents with kids with asthma that were concerned. But asthma, um, and have a look at my stories highlights. Yes, there is a slightly higher risk um, of kids with asthma developing more serious sort of symptoms. But what we what the research shows us with asthma is that kids with asthma are more likely to be hospitalized, but their symptoms still don't kind of go on to be really serious. So that is reassuring for those parents with asthma. It's more those kids with type 1 diabetes, obesity, um, genetic cardiac issues, uh, and epilepsy, um, and there's a few others that are more in that high risk category. Uh, so I do hope that information is helpful, both what I've shared today and also uh, what I've shared on those Instagram stories highlights that you can go back and look at anytime. And I've saved those there so that you can, um, you know, you can let let people know uh, your friends, your family who might be concerned about COVID because I got a lot of comments that it was just re- really reassuring and it eased parents' anxiety um, hearing about our experience and also some of that research that I shared about kids and COVID. So feel free to sort of send anyone to this podcast episode that might have, you know, concerns and a lot of anxiety about their family getting COVID and recovering from COVID. Thank you so much for listening. Um, And I hope this episode was helpful. I'd love for you to share it with a friend, as I said, Um, and come on over to Instagram while you're checking out those those story highlights um, and and let me know what you found helpful about this episode. I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye for now. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode, as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.